Good morning, everybody. Happy Saturday. Uh, I took a little bit of a break yesterday from making videos. Didn't upload anything for the first time in quite a while. Um, definitely not going to be able to do that very much soon here because the season's going to start. We're going to be playing in real games. And uh, there was nothing to talk about yesterday, so I figured eh, today's not a bad day to just not really upload anything. But uh, yeah, not going to be seeing a lot of those days going forward. And I think you guys can understand that if there's just nothing to talk about, you don't want to force it. You don't want to force it. So uh, today, definitely, though, there's going to be stuff to talk about because the Seahawks are playing in a uh, preseason game tonight. Preseason game number two, hosting the Dallas Cowboys. And I'm going to be streaming it here on YouTube. So keep an eye out for that. Game starts in about 10 hours. And I should be going live right around then. And we will be doing our preseason watch-along stream. Should be fun. Should be good. And... Yeah, um, it's going to be kind of a little warm-up for my regular season watch-along streams because, like I said, we are going to do a couple of those. Starting to lean the uh, Carolina game, by the way, for whatever that's worth. Seems like a lot of people want to see me do the Carolina game to start off, and then we'll go from there. But anyway, so Seahawks hosting the Cowboys tonight. Now, Cowboys have already kind of said they're not playing their starters this preseason very much. The only starters they're going to be playing are the new starters. So, no Dak, no CD, no Tony Pollard, Tyron Smith, Zach Martin, Micah Parsons, Trayvon Diggs. You're probably not going to be seeing any of those guys. The Cowboys, I think, already said, in fact, that they're going to play Will Greer a lot in this game. Their third-string QB, who faces an uphill battle to even make the roster. So, probably going to be a lot of that. And on the Seahawks side of things, we don't know yet. Carroll likes to keep this stuff vague and chill and close to the chest. He, he doesn't, he tends to kind of keep it secretive who's going to be playing in the preseason. So if I had to guess, I'd say you're not going to see Geno, not going to see Metcalf or Lockett. You may not even see JSN, although he is a rookie, so maybe we give him some reps. Um, it, it's probably going to be another game where the second and third and fourth stringers get a chance to assert themselves. And there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, I don't know how I feel about giving a guy like a Geno Smith no reps in the preseason. But uh, you definitely don't have to give him a lot. You're seeing what you need to see in practice, in training camp, etc. So I'm, I'm good with it if it plays out that way. I understand. And uh, we have a lot of things we need to decide on the back end of this roster anyway. So getting a full look at those guys matters more. So... There are two guys on the Cowboys that are definitely going to play, near as I can tell anyway, who are interesting. You've got the number one guy, I think, Mozzie Smith. And it kind of bums me out that it looks like Oluwatimi is not going to be able to play in this game. I'm not getting the sense that Oluwatimi is going to be able to play because of the elbow injury. And this would have been a great test for him. They're former teammates, by the way. They both uh, played at Michigan, so... They probably know each other very well. They probably practice against each other all the time. Would have been great to see that matchup in an actual game. Well, preseason game, but a game. And doesn't look like we're going to get it. So what we are going to get is an opportunity for Evan Brown to play well against an NFL caliber, a starting NFL caliber defensive uh, tackle and pull away with that starting job. And I do believe that at this point, Evan Brown is the overwhelming favorite to start week one, simply because Oluwatimi got hurt and he's not practicing right now. So obviously you don't like it when things happen because of that, but I do believe that it is what it is. I don't think Oluwatimi is going to be able to play when he's missing so much of camp in preseason, at least immediately. Maybe down the line, if Evan Brown's not playing well or Phil Haynes isn't playing well, you can swap him in um, at center. But I, I think that uh, for now, it's already pretty much decided. So that's kind of the spotlight for me on the Cowboys side. The other guy who's interesting to watch is Deuce Vaughn. And uh, he's obviously not going to start for the Cowboys, but he is going to play a role on that offense. He does matter. He is a piece of note on that offense. So he's probably going to get a big look at this game. He had 50 yards rushing in the first preseason game for the Cowboys. And he's he looks every bit the player that people thought he was going to be when he entered the draft. 
Very, very small, but very, very shifty. He's got the Darren Sproles stuff down pretty well. So, hey, this run defense played fairly well against the Vikings. If they can do that again against a meaningful NFL player in Deuce Vaughn, then I think people are going to start feeling a little bit better about this. And it, it kind of goes to show that stuff that happens in the NFL, everybody's worried about our defensive line not being good enough. Everybody's worried about how our defensive line, well, we, we didn't get good enough players to have improved enough on that front. But there's schematic things that you can do to overcome that. And it seems like that's been done. One of the things that got highlighted in that Vikings preseason game was how much better this defense did rallying to the ball and providing run support from the back end. So if we can continue to see that, people are going to feel good about that going forward. So those are the two main Cowboys guys who can do damage and we can learn stuff from. But other than that, other than that, it's going to be a game of backups versus backups for the most part going to be guys fighting for the roster and there's an opportunity here in all that for some guys to I think kind of seal up their spot on the roster if Jake Bobo has another good game I think he's in I think that last preseason game doesn't even really matter all that much I think that if Jake Bobo has another good game he's got the fifth receiver spot pretty much locked up um, I think that Greg Island is a guy who can lock up a roster spot just because we need a 10th offensive lineman if he does well in this game. Um, defensively, I think that a guy like, uh, Levi Bell or Jacob Sykes can at least give himself a chance. I don't believe he has a chance right now. That first preseason game against the Vikings where both those guys played really well put them on the map, but neither guy I think has secured the bag on the roster at all. I don't even think they are likely to make it as of right now. But if they do that again, we're going to have to start talking about it at least as a possibility. Because there are some guys on the back end of this uh, front seven depth chart that aren't... We wouldn't miss them that much as of right now as far as we know. Like, they could go one way or the other. I like Miles Adams, but he hasn't made a big impact in the NFL yet. I like, um, some, I, I like um, Cameron Young, but if he just isn't ready because he's not practicing right now, he's missing time due to practice and he needs to go on IR, then it's. It, I don't think we would be really, really unhappy about that. I think that would just be kind of something that we take in stride and um, can easily be replaced as of right now. So guys like that have a chance to assert themselves and lock up a 53-man spot, I think. Uh, maybe a guy like a Sutherland because there is a little bit of a battle for backup safety and uh, special teams on this team. Uh, there's no Joey Blunt out there, I don't think. I think he's still hurt. So Sutherland gets a great chance, and so does Jarek Reed, actually. Those two guys may be fighting for the last safety spot on this roster. So there's an opportunity for those guys to say, hey, you got to give us one of those final roster spots. And I think this game means a lot more than the Green Bay preseason game in terms of trying to do that. So... There's an opportunity here. And there's an opportunity, by the way, to make the uh, practice squad as well. Uh, there are going to be some guys who, if they have a good game, could be like, hey, I either belong on your practice squad or, even better, I belong on another team. I know I can't make this team probably, but I can make another team. That happens all the time. You have guys that play well, can't make the roster on the team they're on, but get attention elsewhere. So a guy like Kobach, who played, I think, really well last week. But we don't really have room for a fifth running back on this roster. We got four when the season starts, likely. So I, I don't think we can carry a fifth. You've got practice squad, or maybe he doesn't even get that far. Obviously, we would want him to get to the practice squad for our purposes. But for his purposes, if he can find a way to an active roster based off this preseason... That, that's something that can really be solidified with a big game tonight from Kobach, and he's going to get the opportunity to. I don't think you're going to see K-9. It doesn't look like you're getting McIntosh. So all he has to do is wait his turn behind Charbonnet and DJ. So should get an opportunity there. We're going to have some receivers that have a very, very thin chance of making this team that are trying to get practice squad attention. I think, like, for instance, uh, Cody Thompson may end up on our practice squad. He could solidify that or solidify a roster spot with another team. 
with a good game. He needs it because he obviously didn't participate in the last one. Uh, Tyjon Lindsay is a guy who we probably cannot make room for on this roster, but if he can make an impact, practice squad spots are open. Right? Remember, we don't have to worry about D. Eskridge for the first six games. He's suspended. He's not going to take any roster spot anywhere. So that frees up an opportunity for these guys. I think Landers is out, so that's going to be more reps for these other guys. If Landers can't play, that means there's an opportunity for these other guys that they need to take advantage of. Um, defensively, uh, realistically, I know I just said Levi Bell and Jacob Sykes as guys who could make the roster, but more realistically... They're fighting for the practice squad. They're fighting for one of those 16 spots where they can be like, okay, I'm going to get a paycheck. I'm going to have a job this year. And if the worst happens on the active roster, maybe I get called up. That's probably what those guys are fighting for realistically. So those guys, great opportunity for them. And again, if they play well in this game, that's two good preseason games in a row, that'll probably do it. That'll probably pretty much lock it up. So there are going to be opportunities all over this um all all over this roster for guys like that. Those are some of the big ones. Obviously some of them won't have a big impact on the team this year or even a small impact on this team, but Jake Bobo getting that fifth receiver spot, that could matter. That could absolutely matter. A guy like Brian Kobach making the practice squad, if he does that, he probably plays at some point for us this year a little bit. Uh, a guy like Greg Island could absolutely get out there if the worst happens on the offensive line. So those are the things I'm keeping an eye on. Those are the things I'm watching for. Let me know what you think. I will see you guys tonight. Can't wait. Go Hawks. We'll be live streaming in about 10 hours.